Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I'm going to cover how to use Blender's image UV mapping system to create image based patterns in radiance. So in effect we can apply images to faces within our model and those images will either affect the reflectivity of opaque elements or they'll affect the transmissivity of um, transparent elements. So I've just created a very simple scene, um, a room with a picture hanging on the wall and a, a window in the other wall. I'm keeping these two sides open just for visualization purposes. Um, and these objects at the moment, the room object just has a, window, a walls of uh, material associated with all the walls and a window material associated with the plane in the window. Um, and this picture frame object has a frame material for the border and just a picture material for the actual plane within the frame. So to do um, to use Blender's images and UV mapping in Radiance we first need to make sure that we are in the Cycles render engine. By default, we're in the Blender render engine, but make sure that you're in the Cycles render. And then we can start to unwrap or UV unwrap the faces here to put an image onto them. So I'll start with the picture frame. If I go into edit mode on the picture frame, maybe if I just go into wireframe view, um, I want to make sure that it's the plane or the face that I'm going to have the image associated with selected. And then once it's selected, I can now open up my UV mapping window. So I've got my general living node set up down here in my node editor, but I'm just dragging open a new window and I'm going to open up the UV image editor. Now, that's uh, an image from a previous simulation I've got. I actually want a different image. So I'm going to open up, um, I think it's this image here, which is one of the image nice posters produced by NASA. Um, and once this image is within the UV mapping window, I can now, with this face selected, press U and that brings up my unwrap menu and I can just click unwrap and that plane will now be projected onto this image with the kind of default scaling it has from the object. Um, once the plane has been projected onto this image we could now rotate it um, but more importantly for us if I go into the edge select mode here and select that edge and it's the same shortcut keys GY and GX so that that image now covers the entirety of that face so if I now edit out of uh, sorry tab out of the edit mode I can now for this picture material instead of having a, a constant color I can now select image texture as a color and I can now navigate to once we've opened up the Kepler image in here then it should now be registered as one of the images within Blender. So I open that and if we go to the material view panel we should see that poster but it's currently not correctly aligned and Uh, oh, I think it's right. Okay. It's because I have rotated this plane, this um, picture frame when I created it. And so it is not. That's better. 
Yes, the if you have if you've rotated the object before you do UV mapping, those rotations can appear or be applied within the UV map itself. Um, again, I'm just going to drag that out, and you'll get a you'll get a real time. Um, You'll get a real-time view in Blender of that mapping. So that's fine, um, but to get that preview you either have to be in textured mode or you have to be in material mode. So that now looks fine and if I do a little preview render of that, yeah that image is correctly applied within Blender. So it's important to remember that the color is image texture. You pick the image that you have mapped to the face in your UV mapping window. So once that is done, I can now say for the um, Livy um, uh, or the V-Suite version of this picture material, I can just turn on textured and I might make my plastic base material perfectly white so this material if it's purely white won't affect the coloration of the image texture so I could now export that I can preview that Oh, my camera is a little bit out of alignment. I might just align my camera a little bit better. That'll do. Then I preview that. We should now see that that image texture appears within radiance. So it's a quick and relatively quick and easy way of specifying what are called patterns in radiance via Blender's image mapping system. So this can be good, I mean, something like this wouldn't be very useful for a numerical lighting simulation, but it can be good for um, producing final visualizations or renders of your radiant scene. So that's fine. Um, I could also do then the same with the window. If I go into edit mode, I've got my window pane face selected. So once again I could open up, uh, let's see, I've got a nice Art Deco window here. So again I can press U, unwrap it, but I'm just going to make sure that my rotation is correct. Okay, and if I now drag that over to there, that face is now mapped to that image. And over here, I've got a transparent um, material. This actual material type doesn't matter because this is a blender material type. So you can set this to whatever you like. But the important thing is, again, we change color to image texture and we change to the original image that we had. So let's just have a look at that. Yeah, and that appears now within my scene. So once again, I might just make this diffuse just so I can see what's going on in the Blender viewport. If I have it set to transparent, it'll look or can look um, totally transparent within the viewport. So that's fine. 
So my V-Suite material type, I don't want plastic this time, which is a diffused reflector. I'm going to have glass. And again, I turn on texture, textured. And if I export that geometry again, I preview again. And we should see that patination slowly form within the picture frame. Or within the window frame. I think my horizon's a little dark outside, so I'm just going to create a default material for that. So um, that image has now been applied to that glass. And that potentially could be important for a numerical simulation because the color of the light coming through that window and the level of light coming through that window has now been affected. So my sun is currently over here, but if I was to increase the day of the year, and if I was to make it much later in the day, Like so, if I export that sky, um, I might want to zoom out my camera slightly. Should do. If I now preview that, we should now takes a little bit longer for the simulation because it's working with images now, but you would eventually, oh yeah, we see it fairly clearly there. We see the patination of the light from the window and from the image applied to the window landing on the floor. So if we were then, for example, to create a sensor plane, within the model. So I'm just going to use a floor for this purpose. So I'm just going to select the floor. I'm going to add a new material slot, assign it to the floor, call that sensor. Um, I'm going to check my normals are pointing in the right direction, which is up in this case. Yeah, they are. Um, Yeah, that's fine, it's pointing outwards. Um, and I'll subdivide that plane. Maybe a little bit more than that. Fine, and I call this now, or I designate this sensor as a light sensor. Fine, our X, we've only got this preview button here at the moment because we didn't have any sensing surfaces before. If I press export, we should now have a calculate button. So I can calculate that. And if I display, we can see now, although it's very rough, we can see the patination of that window in the um, patination of the light landing on the floor. I could even if I wanted, if I go back to the original mesh, I might edit, go into edit mode, turn off my normal display. Can if I want, select the area of the floor that the light from the window is landing on. I think that's all of them. Yeah, I can further subdivide those if I want. Export, calculate, take a little bit longer because I've got more uh, sensor points now to calculate.
Evet. My. Merci if you come. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. Why has my mouse disappeared? <sighs> now that is oh, there we go. Uh radiance display again. And we can now see yeah, a little bit quite clearly that patination of that window in our lighting metric results which in this case is Lux. So it can be important or can be useful for numerical simulations to be able to apply an appropriate image which will affect material properties in an appropriate way. Um, so it becomes yeah, quite quick. Um, to set up, I could pick this wall for example, uh, I could create uh, a new material associated with that wall, call it concrete, um, in my UV mapping editor down here, I can pick a concrete, this is what I loaded up earlier, concrete material. So again, I can UV unwrap that face, which is coming out in a slightly strange shape. So I, what I might do is I might look at it directly and I can project from view bounds. Projecting from view bounds basically means that directly from the view of your, the direct view of your face will get projected onto here and it will fill the dimensions of the image you've currently got selected. So that is applied to that wall or UV map to that wall. If again I now change the color of the concrete to image texture, pick that concrete image. Um, again I don't want the base material to affect the color of the concrete so I make that pure white. Um, and concrete is a diffuse reflector primarily so plastic is fine. So if I now export that and preview that, you should now hope, ah, there's something I forgot to do, which is very good in a video tutorial. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I've got to turn on textured. Very important to remember to turn that on. Export again, preview again. And now, hopefully, as that image slowly resolves, yeah, we can start to see that concrete texture appear on the wall behind the image. So, um, yeah, I think that's everything I have to cover. Um, there is one thing to remember. Um, you can unwrap multiple faces at the same time and you can map an image to those multiple faces at the same time. In fact, I might just show you that when I think about it. If I was, for example, to take the image from the frame, the window frame, or if I was to take that face and I was to subdivide that face, um, I could UV unwrap all four of those faces and they appear then all four together. So if I put in my Kepler, so we can map the four faces across the um, whole of the image and that should still work fine. So if I was to go into my material view again, that mapping still works. If I, and that mapping will still work in radiance as well. If I was to um, scale up these faces so that they're larger than the image, that image will get repeated. But radiance won't do that. Radiance 
will make this around the edges the base color and it will only put the texture here. But as long as your faces are smaller than the image, so like so, then Radiance should pick up that mapping perfectly fine. So as this resolves, we should hopefully see that that image is now scaled in accordance with the way we have it set up here. So um, a very recent version of the vSuite is required for this functionality, um, 0.4.7 or above, I believe. Um, but whatever the latest one, whatever the currently downloadable one is, um, on the 5th of January 2017. Oh, and yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, so, okay, I think that's all. Thanks for watching.